In mathematics, the hyperoperation sequence is an infinite sequence of arithmetic operations that starts with the unary operation of successor, then continues with the binary operations of addition, multiplication, and exponentiation, after which the sequence proceeds with further binary operations extending beyond exponentiation, using right associativity. For the operations beyond exponentiation, the nth member of this sequence is named by Reuben Goodstein after the Greek prefix of n suffixed with ation, pentation, hexation, etc., and can be written as using n minus two arrows in the sup arrow notation. Each hyperoperation may be understood recursively in terms of the previous one by. It may also be defined according to the recursion rule part of the definition, as in the sup arrow version of the Ackermann function. This can be used to easily show numbers much larger than those which scientific notation can, such as skewers number and Google Plexplex. But there are some numbers which even they cannot easily show, such as Graham's number and tree. This recursion rule is common to many variants of hyperoperations. Definition The hyperoperation sequence is the sequence of binary operations, defined recursively as follows. By ignoring the first argument, for n e equals 0, 1, 2, 3, this definition reproduces the basic arithmetic operations of successor, addition, multiplication, and exponentiation, respectively. As in for n4 it extends these basic operations beyond exponentiation to what can be written in the sub arrow notation as Nuth's notation could be extended to negative indices minus 2 in such a way as to agree with the entire hyperoperation sequence, except for the lag in the indexing. The hyperoperations can thus be seen as an answer to the question, what's next, in the sequence, successor, addition, multiplication, exponentiation, and so on. Noting that the relationship between basic arithmetic operations is illustrated, allowing the higher operations to be defined naturally as above. The parameters of the hyperoperation hierarchy are sometimes referred to by their analogous exponentiation term, so A is the base, B is the exponent, and N is the rank. In common terms, the hyperoperations are ways of compounding numbers that increase in growth based on the iteration of the previous hyperoperation. The concepts of successor, addition, multiplication and exponentiation are all hyperoperations. The successor operation is the most primitive. The addition operator specifies the number of times one is to be added to itself to produce a final value. Multiplication specifies the number of times a number is to be added to itself and exponentiation refers to the number of times a number is to be multiplied by itself. Examples This is a list of the first seven hyperoperations. Special cases H n e equals 0, when n e equals 2, or n equals 3, b 1, or n 4, b odd 1, when n equals 3, b e equals 0, or n 4, b even b, when n e equals 1, b plus 1, when n e equals 0, h n e equals 0, when n equals 2, 1. When n equals 0, or n3 a, when n equals 1 h n equals 0, when n equals 0, or n4 a minus 1, when n equals 1 minus a, when n equals 2 1 a, when n equals 3 history. One of the earliest discussions of hyperoperations was that of Albert Bennett in 1914, who developed some of the theory of commutative hyperoperations. About 12 years later, Wilhelm Ackermann defined the function which somewhat resembles the hyperoperation sequence. In his 1947 paper, L. Goodstein introduced the specific sequence of operations that are now called hyperoperations, and also suggested the Greek names tetration, pentation, etc., for the extended operations beyond exponentiation, as a three argument function, e.g., the hyperoperation sequence as a whole is seen to be a version of the original Ackermann function, recursive but not primitive recursive, as 
modified by Goodstein to incorporate the primitive successor function together with the other three basic operations of arithmetic, and to make a more seamless extension of these beyond exponentiation. The original three-argument Ackermann function uses the same recursion rule as does Goodstein's version of it, but differs from it in two ways first defines a sequence of operations starting from addition rather than the successor function, then multiplication, exponentiation, etc. Secondly, the initial conditions for result in, thus differing from the hyperoperations beyond exponentiation. The significance of the b plus 1 in the previous expression is that equals, where b counts the number of operators rather than counting the number of operands as does the b in, and so on for the higher level operations. Notations. This is a list of notations that have been used for hyperoperations. Variant starting from in 1928. Wilhelm Ackermann defined a three-argument function which gradually evolved into a two-argument function known as the Ackermann function. The original Ackermann function was less similar to modern hyperoperations because his initial conditions start with for all n greater than 2. Also he assigned addition to n equals 0, multiplication to n equals 1 and exponentiation to n equals 2. So the initial conditions produce very different operations for tetration and beyond. Another initial condition that has been used is, due to Rojar Petta, which does not form a hyperoperation hierarchy. Variant starting from zero in 1984. W. Clenshaw and F. W. J. Olver began the discussion of using hyperoperations to prevent computer floating point overflows. Since then, many other authors have renewed interest in the application of hyperoperations to floating point representation, are all defined for b equals minus 1. While discussing tetration, Clenshaw al. assumed the initial condition, which makes yet another hyperoperation hierarchy. Just like in the previous variant, the fourth operation is very similar to tetration, but offset by one. Lower hyperoperations An alternative for these hyperoperations is obtained by evaluation from left to right. Since defined with this was extended to ordinal numbers by Donner and Tarchi, definition 1, by, it follows from definition 1, corollary 2, and theorem 9, that, for a 2 and b1, that but this suffers a kind of collapse, failing to form the, power tower, traditionally expected of hyperoperators, theorem 3, if alpha 2 and gamma 2, corollary 33, commutative hyperoperations, Commutative hyperoperations were considered by Albert Bennett as early as 1914, which is possibly the earliest remark about any hyperoperation sequence. Commutative hyperoperations are defined by the recursion rule which is symmetric in A and B, meaning all hyperoperations are commutative. This sequence does not contain exponentiation, and so does not form a hyperoperation hierarchy.